These are the most important concepts that you need to know in order to be successful on Etsy and really break into the marketplace. Hi, I'm Shay. I'm a beginner on Etsy. I started my store in January 2023, and my goal is to build this store up to a six-figure store by the end of this year. So if that interests you, if you also want to build a six-figure store, or you just want to see what to expect as a complete beginner on Etsy, please like and follow and subscribe. I will be sharing many videos about my journey. I share my sales each month, and I also am sharing strategies and everything I'm doing to grow my Etsy shop and break into the Etsy marketplace as a complete beginner in 2023. I've previously posted videos about the numbers that I've seen in my store in my first month and in my second month. So if you're interested in seeing those numbers, you can go ahead and hop over to my channel to see those videos. So this video is part one of a probably five part series where I'm revealing literally everything I've been doing up until this point to grow my Etsy shop. I've been super excited to make this video because I really don't want to hold anything back. I don't want to gatekeep anything or not share strategies. I really want to just show every single thing I've been doing. And I do think it's completely repeatable. If you implement these strategies, I do think that you absolutely can grow a digital products Etsy shop from scratch and start seeing pretty quick results. The only thing I'm not sharing is the actual link to my store. I know several people have asked, but the main reason is actually conversion rate. So right now I get about 150 visits to my store every single day. And if I were to post my link and say in one day, get another 100 or another 200 people going to that shop, then it would absolutely tank my conversion rate because I would double the amount of visitors, but not double the amount of sales. And so that would impact my ranking in the Etsy algorithm. So I have so many strategies to share that I'm actually going to break this into a five part video series. And today, this is just part one. Um, so part one, I'm going to talk about mindset and developing a system. And I actually think this is the most important thing as a newbie on Etsy is sort of the mindset, the things to expect, and then also developing a system that's going to grow your store consistently and start getting you those consistent sales. In part two, I'm going to talk all about niche research, what to sell, how to find what to sell. So that's gonna be a really great video as well. And then in part three, I'm going to talk about actually creating your listings, how to create multiple listings quickly, and then also how to do your listing photos and, and things like that and the strategies that I use to, to have good listing photos and to have a professional looking store. Part four is super important. It's going to be all about SEO, how I actually dive in and find the keywords that do well and then also how I incorporate those keywords into my listings and into my store. And then in part five, I'm going to talk about marketing and branding and doing Etsy ads, things like that, and kind of just bringing it all together so that you kind of have the whole picture of everything that I'm doing in my Etsy shop. So without further ado, let's actually get into the strategies. So like I said, in this first video, we are going to talk about the mindset and the systems that you need in order to be successful as a beginner on Etsy. With that, I think there are three things um, from a mindset perspective that I'm going to go into and then stay till the end because I'm going to share the number one mistake that I have made in my store that I think that if you can avoid that, it will help you so much. And I truly think that you can actually outperform my results by avoiding this mistake because this is such a common mistake, but I'll get into that at the end. So be sure to stay for that. So the first thing about mindset that I want to talk about is understanding the actions required for a desired result. So I think there's a major common misconception um, among the Etsy YouTube Etsy coach community that um, 
selling digital products on Etsy is passive. I think that's maybe like a clickbaity thing to say, oh, just, you know, throw a product up once and look, it sells $10,000 worth. And that is absolutely not the case most of the time. And that is something that I learned very, very quickly once I started my shop. Right now, my Etsy business is very much not passive. I am spending about four hours a day on my Etsy shop. It is called a side hustle for a reason. It certainly is, is time consuming right now. And that's because I am listing three products a day. So, you know, there's product research, product creation, and everything that goes along with that. Eventually, I don't want to be spending that much time, but early on to really see the results that you desire, you have to put in some pretty substantial work and you have to be willing to do those actions in order to get those results. I am fortunate that I am able to spend that much time every single day. I do recognize that other people may not be in a position to spend that much time and that's okay. I'm not saying that you can't do anything on Etsy if you can't dedicate four hours a day. But I'm also saying that for me, in order to get to the 100K Etsy shop by the end of the year, I do think that I need to be listing three a day. I might adjust that throughout the year. We'll see how things go. But that's what I've determined for me. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be doing three a day. I think one a day actually you probably could have a really pretty big store by the end of the year if you did that or even quite frankly one a week just being consistent and continuing to improve and continuing to learn is what's going to make all the difference and by me listing three a day that's just kind of accelerating that process because i did want to grow this store as quickly as possible another thing i did want to mention here is quality versus quantity you don't want to be sacrificing on the quality of your prod products just to you know throw up as many as you can so i am listing three a day but i do really try to make those well-made and well-researched products it's totally a fair strategy to have slightly more complex digital products like say some type of like spreadsheet template that has multiple tabs and things like that. Obviously, you will not be listing three of those a day. If you're doing complex products and listing even one a week, but there it's a $20 product, I do think that that is a very valid strategy. And in fact, I think the competition for those is oftentimes lower because it is a lot more complex to make. So you absolutely can go that route as well. And consistency with your listings is more important to the Etsy algorithm than just throwing up a bunch of items all at once. It is better to consistently be listing, consistently be in your shop doing things and show the Etsy algorithm that you are an active seller. So the second mindset related strategy that I wanna talk about is to not quit too early. This is a super common mistake and I've done it many times as well where you'll start something you'll start a business idea and then you don't see results and so you quit pretty quickly and unfortunately most of the time there's quite a bit of a lag between when you start and, and all the time and and everything that you're putting into it at the beginning before you actually start seeing results so you kind of have to push through that and not quit too early. Your first listing is going to be the hardest. Your first sale is going to be the hardest to get. Your first $100 on Etsy is going to be the hardest and take the longest, but then the next 100 is going to be easier and the next 100 even easier. And it's going to keep compounding and keep growing. And there are several reasons for this. One is that when you're a completely new shop, the Etsy algorithm doesn't really know what to do with your shop. But as you get sales, as you continue to list consistently, the algorithm likes you better and better. So it compounds in that way. What it also does is as you list consistently, you're learning how to do your SEO better. You're learning how to research products better. You're learning how to design products better and how to have better listing photos. So you get incrementally better every single time. That's what is also going to compound your success.
So there will definitely be times where you'll feel extremely overwhelmed and frustrated with your shop and you'll want to give up, but just remember that you potentially could just not see those compounding effects yet. And you just have to keep going and keep improving and keep iterating. Okay, the third mindset related thing that I wanna talk about today is the concept that there isn't a secret to success, there is a system to success. So I think a lot of online business coaches and you know big YouTubers and things will kind of make it sound like there's some secret that they know and only they know <laughs> about how to be successful on Etsy or with any online business. But I truly don't think that that is the case, that there's just one secret that all the successful Etsy people know and no one else does. And it's, you know, you can only find it in this course or program. I don't think that's true at all. I do think though that there is a system to success. And as long as you follow that system consistently, you have no choice but to be successful in whatever online business it is. So at some point I will make a video sharing a little bit more about me and my background. But although I am completely new to Etsy, I am not new to making money online or online side hustles. There is one thing that I've learned and one concept related to developing a system that I wanna share because I think it's so important. So this concept is what I call KMMs. I'm sure there's like a fancy business school term for this, but to me, KMM stands for key money maker. And a KMM is just, the one or two or three actions that you need to take consistently in your business that are going to directly impact the amount of money that you're making in your business. So to determine your KMM, you really wanna think about what is the actual thing that is causing me to make money in this business? What is the one thing that if I took it out completely, I would not make any money? So. For me and for probably most of you, your KMM is going to be listing because you could have the best SEO in the world in the most perfect niche and the most beautiful product. But if you're not listing it, you're not going to make money. So the one action that's really moving the needle is listing. So you want to prioritize your KMM. So if the entire day just is crazy busy and you know you're working on your day job and you know you have family responsibilities or whatever it is you want to make sure that at the very least your KMM is still getting done so because i know that my KMM my priority is those three listings a day i'm taking a lot of actions ahead of time to make sure that i meet that KMM every single day so that means scheduling out my creation of the products and doing my research and all of that is going to be scheduled out so that I make sure that I can meet the three listings a day. Another thing I do is I plan for instances where I am not going to have time to dedicate to Etsy that day, but I still want to make sure that I'm hitting the KMM. So what I do is right now I probably have about 10 to 12 drafts in my Etsy account ready to go for days when I still want to meet my three listings, but I don't have time to dedicate to anything else. I know that can feel a little overwhelming, feeling like you have to do something every single day. Um, the three listings a day, again, that's my KMM. That's, those are the actions that I think I need to input in order to get my desired output from the business. That doesn't mean that you have to do the exact same thing. But that strategy and really just tracking that one number, just three listings a day, that's really what's helped me grow my shop. Okay, so that concludes the three mindset strategies that I think are essential um, to actually being successful as a new Etsy store owner. If you've made it this far, thank you so much. Um, and now I want to talk about a bonus tip. This is a mistake that I made in my business and I still am trying to recover from it. And I think that if you can avoid this mistake, you can absolutely do extremely well on Etsy.
And the mistake that I made is having shiny object syndrome. When I started my shop, I was making products for a very specific type of small business owner, but then I would see another product come up in my research and I'd be like, ooh, I wanna make that. And ooh, I wanna make that. And pretty soon I had a pretty disjointed store where some of my stuff is not even for business owners. And then some of my stuff is like completely random. <laughs> um, it's still in the digital product space, but it kind of made my store super disjointed and that honestly can really hurt your store and hurt your sales. And some of the most successful new shops I see are pretty focused on serving a certain group of people. So that would be my suggestion to you is to not go and try and do a bunch of different things. Focus on your niche and focus on serving that audience. So thank you so much for watching this video. In part two of this series, I'm going to talk all about niche research and how to actually find niches that will work well for you as a brand new store owner. So if you're interested in that, please like, follow, subscribe. Don't forget to comment if you have any questions. I love chatting with other new shop owners. I know we're all in this together. So thank you so much for watching this video. See ya.